We've got a small three-phase motor which I'm going to test out and connect in star formation. First of all, of course, we need to identify the ends of each winding. Um, and to do that, we'll use a low resistance ohm meter because the resistance is going to be reasonably high. Um, and of course, before we start, we need to zero the leads. And as ever, remember, make sure that the solid parts of the crocodile clips are touching, push them firm with your hand. And if we push the zero button, we can see that it removes the value of the leads. And just to recap, if we use the, the moving bits of the crocodile clips, the resistance is going to be higher. And when we zero it, we're going to be measuring values which are, are less than the actual values are. So it's important that we always use the solid bits of the crocodile clip. Having zeroed the leads, I now need to identify the ends of the windings and make sure that each of the windings have, has got pretty much the same resistance value. So first of all, we can obviously tell that one end of all of the windings are going to be white and one end, the other end are going to be pink. So just pick any at random and then I need to check all three until I get a reading. Okay, so I've got a value there of 40, say 46 ohms. So that I don't check the same ones twice, just as easy to tuck them away. Simply so that I don't check the same ones twice, that's all. Next, choose another winding. I'll persevere, there we go. And then check again. And 46 ohms again, so that's the same as the other pair. Perfectly okay. We know that I've now tested those two. And again, just, just to tuck them out of the way and identify them. Just put a bit of tape around them out of the way. Just check the last winding now to make sure that it's the same value. And again, 46. So at that point, I know that all of these windings are the same resistance value, so the motor is going to be very well balanced and it should work okay. But of course, I need to do an insulation resistance test as well. The easiest way for me to do the insulation resistance test is to connect the motor up first in star formation. Because all the windings are joined together at one end, that will test between all of them ultimately. So just need to connect the three. It doesn't matter whether I use the pink ones or the white ones, but if I connect the three white ones together in a connector block. Make sure I do it up nice and tight because we don't want any loose connections. If we get a loose connection, we'll get a lot of heat and then in the end, we'll have a fire in the motor, which is no good to anybody. Having connected that up, I now to do an, need to do an insulation resistance test on the motor to make sure that the windings aren't touching the sides of the motor. So, Nice easy way of doing that. If I just connect to one of these, it's going to read through all of the windings because of course they're joined together at the other end. I need to find a good earth. Inside here I've got a nice clean connection. Set this to 500 volts, push the button and lock it and just let it run for a, a minute or two and we'll see. But I can see straight away that Actually, that's a very good motor because I've got a resistance value of 10 gig ohms. So it's very, very high. That would be a good motor and you would expect that to be fit for service.